Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church on this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, if you're keeping count of all that. Just a couple of quick announcements uh, this morning for you. Our Resurrection Lutheran schools are going to be kicking it back in, so we welcome the teachers and welcome the new students again. It's that time to start getting the ball rolling. Uh, it, it seems like summer just began, didn't it? And now here we are uh, ready to start the, that routine uh, as well. Uh, if you've been visiting us uh, for a while, or if you're online and been be viewing us online for a while, and you've been considering membership, uh, we have sent out invitations to everybody who left us contact information. Uh, so if you did leave us contact information and you didn't get one, then my apologies, that's on me. Or if you didn't leave us any contact information and you've been visiting and thinking, this is a pretty nice church, I think I'd like to be a member. We have a class coming up on September 10th from 10 a.m., to 2 p.m., just get a hold of the church office or myself, uh, and we will make sure that you get the follow-on information uh, needed for that. So we welcome anybody who is uh, considering that. With that, let us begin our service. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Take a moment now to greet your neighbor in that peace and reconciliation. Peace, peace band. Good morning, good morning. Peace. Peace. Please remain standing as we begin with our opening song, I Give You My Heart. our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But 
but with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all of our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and your will and true obedience to your God, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit, that He believes he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to all. Amen. We continue with our song of praise.
seated. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 23, starting at the 16th verse. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of prophet, prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished his, the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have, I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy, this, prophesy the deceit of their own hearts, who think to make my people forget my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream to tell the dream, tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What, what has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? It's, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson today is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 40, and chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. By faith, Abraham, who he tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises when, was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to even raise him from the dead, from which figur figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac evoked in future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of his sons by Joseph, of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were destroyed, drowned, sorry. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, 
did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. What more shall I say? For time would, would fail me to tell of Gideon, Burak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the fire of power, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so they might, so they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. All, and all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what, had, what was promised, since God had provided something better for us that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, has endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so, so that may you, you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Good morning, everybody. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I've come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please have a seat. And at this time, we welcome the younger worshipers to come up front with Miss Erica for the kids' message.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know how many engineers or scientists or even physics majors are out there today or watching online. Um, as you may know, I am an arts and humanities guy, an English lit major, very proud English lit major, but I do remember a few things from Physics 101. One of the things I remember from my days of studying science is this thing called inertia. And so this week, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. I looked it up in Merriam-Webster's dictionary and I found this definition about inertia. Inertia is a property of matter by which matter remains either at rest or in uniform motion in the same straight line unless an external force acts upon it. Either remains at rest or in uniform motion, same straight line unless an external motion acts on it. Whether we're talking about something complicated like satellites out in outer space that are circling the globe, or whether we're talking about something more ordinary like our interactions with one another, our faith journey, something very similar is happening. We remain at rest or headed in the same best basic direction unless some external action acts on us. And the external action pointed to by the prophet Jeremiah in our Old Testament reading today, the external action that Jesus mentions in our gospel reading, even the promise that we have in the book of Hebrews, all of it brings together the word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit working in us through God's word to bring about a much needed course correction sometimes that neither we ourselves could ever bring about by our own power. And so today, standing on the firm foundation of God's word, today giving thanks for the gift of God's spirit, we rest in God's arms and we give thanks for the work, that course correction, his work is already bringing about in our hearts day in and day out throughout our life of faith one that turns our attention in the end to Christ and the faith that the Savior works in us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Last week, we found Jesus was talking about peace. He said, do not be anxious, seek God's kingdom. This week, Jesus distinguishes the true peace he brings from the false peace of the world he came to rescue us from. And the false peace Jesus has in mind is that spiritual inertia we experience when we get caught up in the ways of the world and need to have our attention focused back on Christ again. Now, when you heard me read a few moments ago in the Gospel reading that Jesus said, I came not to bring peace but division, you might have been scratching your head together with, with me when I really think about this sometimes. Remember what we heard and read about last Christmas, Christmas Eve. Angels appeared in the night sky. They were singing a song, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men of goodwill. As that song was being sung, the very prince of peace was born in a lowly manger. How do you hold the words of that song of the angels together in the same sentence of Jesus that we find in our gospel reading today? Well, all appearances to the contrary, God's word's not trying to have it both ways. You might remember Jesus himself said on another occasion, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. He's making a distinction. And that distinction between true peace and false peace is something we find running throughout all the scriptures. Now, even though in a sense I'm preaching to the crowd because all of you are here today to hear God's word, there's a reminder, I think, in this text that all of us, even when we're focused on God's word as we are right now, can sometimes get our eye off the ball because of the distractions that the world throws our way. And sometimes we get sort of pulled along by that false peace in the world that really brings us to a place where we need a course correction. There was a study done at UCLA not so many years ago 
to try to see how social media impacted the minds of teenagers, people between 13 and 20 years of age. And so the researchers at UCLA got a bunch of young people together, they put them in a brain scanner, and they showed them all kinds of pictures and posts from a platform kind of like Instagram. It was one that they sort of fabricated, made themselves. And they found some really interesting data points. What they discovered when they noticed the reactions that all the young people had to these posts was the more likes a photograph or comment already had, the more likes others would give to it. And they would manipulate things. They would change the number of likes here and put more over there. And they found that when uh, somebody saw their own photographs or saw something that they had written that had more likes on it, they felt better about it themselves. Well, you can see the kind of difficult situation that this can lead into. This university experiment about the impact of social media has a lot to say about what we might call social inertia. What happens when you sort of leave your hands off and let everybody kind of go in the direction that they're naturally pulled? For you and me, that might also mean uh, not so much our inertia as people of faith, but our interaction sometimes with the world that pulls us off course. The social inertia leads us to accommodate ourselves to the status quo out there, even when God's will for us, even when the needs of our neighbor are crying out for our attention. We need a course correction. We need something from the outside. And the prophet Jeremiah offers up images, fire or a hammer or a sword, a fire that's not just a cozy little warm thing in a fireplace, but a raging fire, a wildfire. A hammer that's not just tapping, but it's beating on rocks so hard it breaks the stony cold heart of a person into pieces so that love can come in. Or a sword that divides truth from falsehood. All of it is so that the life-giving good news of the kingdom, all so that the capital P peace, true peace of Jesus Christ our Savior can reign in our hearts and through us into the world. Where does false peace and security in the life of a Christian come from? Well, false peace and security result when we stop hearing the word of God and close ourselves off to the interruption of our own natural inertia that God's word brings. Again, to quote Jeremiah, God says, Is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Fire consumes Hammers obliterate. Without the pain of a course correction, the consequences of inertia left unchecked are worse. And so the law, as hard as it is to hear, is God at work in us. Now, we don't know everything that those prophets in Jeremiah's day were talking about. They were dreaming dreams, apparently. But no matter what else you might be saying about their messages, it was popular. It's what people wanted to hear. It shall be well with you, Jeremiah quotes. No calamity shall come upon you, another one said. I'm okay, you're okay. Is God really just kind of a divine butler that's sort of hanging around ensuring that we're enjoying our best life right now? Is that what it's all about? Prophets in Jeremiah's day were sort of saying, yeah, that's it. And to such a comfortable message, Jeremiah preaches the word of the Lord. Look, the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his mind. The prophets of Israel noticed the heartache, the disappointments, and the fears of the people they were speaking to. But all they had to offer in the end was happy talk. Relax. Stay the course. Reminds me a little bit of an experience I had when I was in college and I was training for a marathon. I wasn't the kind of guy that ran marathons, so the training piece was really, really necessary. And as so often happens when you're trying to 
get ready for something big like that. I had an injury. I uh, stumbled and kind of came down on the side of my foot and ended up getting a hairline fracture in my foot bone. Went to the doctor, just knew that my foot hurt. Went to the doctor and the doctor said, we're not gonna take an x-ray, just we'll wrap it up, but start, working, start walking on it in about two weeks. So I started walking on it two weeks time, didn't feel better. Three weeks time, didn't feel better. After a month, it was starting to feel really, really bad. So I went back, got the x-ray I needed, and by that time, they needed to reset the bone. Not a fun process. Sometimes God's law is sort of like that. It's not fun to read. It's not the kind of word art you're going to see in your grandma's kitchen or on the refrigerator. But it's a necessary message. The law of God is a gift from God's hand because the law of God burns away what we need to have burned away in our hearts so that the beautiful, pure, life-giving message of God's love for us in Jesus Christ can come to us, be received by us, and have its way with us so that we can receive the course correction that we so desperately need. These aren't times to really focus on division. We have plenty of that already in our world, and we don't need to hammer that home today. But we can't leave this gospel reading without wrestling with Jesus' words about Jesus dividing a mother from her daughter, a father from his son, and so forth. It's true that when we turn to a person or a value or some new way of thinking that we're turning away from another one. Jesus wants us to know that we can expect to feel the pain of division between ourselves and those who don't receive God's word or love in Christ, especially family. That pain is real. Jesus experienced it in his own family to a certain extent, at least early on. Reminds me of the fact that we would say this kind of division is not God's desire. It's not God's plan for us, but it's a necessary aspect of separating true peace from false peace. It impacts even the closest of human relationships. When Julie and I were working in Okinawa, Japan, I had a chance to meet uh, a young man there who was a Christian, but whose family were, as I say, not yet Christians. They were worshiping in the world of traditional religion in Okinawa. And every year in April, there was a festival called Shimi. Okinawan people that professed the traditional faith would go to the family tomb. They would pull out big picnic lunch and they would burn incense and pray to their ancestors. Praying to their ancestors, the incense and the smoke going up was supposed to be a, a reminder that their ancestors were there eating the food with them. And they would even burn sort of this ceremonial paper money that was intended to take care of their ancestors in the next world. All of this, of course, was something that my Christian friend was having some difficulties with, right? So I asked him, what did you do? How did you maintain that relationship with your family? And he said, well, I'll tell you something. My family's special and important to me. I couldn't in good conscience join in, and they knew that and recognized it as much as I did. So every year before people got to the cemetery, I'd get up early, I'd sweep the area around the family grave, get the cloth laid down, and do everything I could to ensure that that love for my ancestors and my people was demonstrated, and that they could gather in peace. I couldn't help feeling that we were on different sides of an invisible wall, but I loved my family. So God helps me find ways to show just how special they are to me all the same. When we stand for what we know is true, not everyone is going to stand with us. That was true in the days of the early church. It was true in that situation in Okinawa, Japan, it's true in the U.S., it's true everywhere around the world. As long as we are in this world, the course correction that God gives will in some measure be painful. The true peace. True peace experienced along that journey of faith that is in the midst of course correction will fill us up more than any earthly reward ever can 
ever will. And so our focus today is not on the course correction itself. Our focus today isn't on those divisions we just talked about. Our focus is on where that journey leads. It's where that journey that the Holy Spirit is pointing the way to. And so for that, the real takeaway for us is not the stuff of this world. It's not our own culture that we live in. It's not even some of the people around us. In the end, it is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus brings forgiven sinners everywhere true peace by his baptism unto death on a cross. The Son of God, divided from the Heavenly Father by the weight of the world's sin he carried, suffered the fire and hammer of, of our sins as he died on the cross. But he's accomplished all that was needed for us to enjoy true peace, all that's needed for us to be at work in a world trying to achieve by God's power true community around us. You might just say that God's course correction for our spiritual inertia turns us in the end to Jesus. And so what could be more fitting than to close today with the words from the book of Hebrews we heard read a few moments ago. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the saints in heaven, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. What course correction is the Holy Spirit working in your hearts right now? How can the Holy Spirit use you as one who is focused on Jesus Christ, use you to make the world a little bit, a little bit better place today or this week than it would have been without you? Burned by the fire, and broken by the hammer of God's word and God's law again today, we have more importantly received the renewing work, the life-giving work, the healing work of God's gospel for us that as his people, our sins are forgiven and we have the chance for a new beginning. God is not done with us yet, and thank God that is true. The law reminds us we're sinners, but the gospel bringing us the pledge and promise that in Christ Jesus our sins are forgiven reminds us that though we are people of inertia, there is a life-giving change that has happened and continues to happen in our lives. Today, standing firmly on the foundation of God's word and giving thanks to the gift of the Holy Spirit, with faith we look ahead to the end of the journey to Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. And as we do, repenting anew, we live and work on behalf of the good news. To God be all the glory. Amen. And the peace which passes all human understanding will keep our hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we face our course corrections today, and as we face the course corrections that will undoubtedly come tomorrow, we have a foundation that we can proclaim today. The, using the words of the Nicene Creed, we can proclaim what it is that we believe as we await that day in faith. Please rise as you are able as we make that proclamation now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, being, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the Holy Christian Church and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us heed the Lord's bidding and come to him with all of our concerns of our hearts as we pray in Jesus' name. Almighty God, your word brings peace and unity to those who receive it, but it causes division between your children and those who are outside the faith. Grant that we may hear and heed your word and stand together against all enemies of the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, our fathers in the faith gave good confession of your truth before the powers of this world. Like Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses before us, strengthen our hearts in this day, days that are filled with division and needs for reconciliation, to confess in our words and lives the glory of your name that leads us to the true peace found through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amid the lies of the false prophet. Arm your servants in this day, especially our newly installed Southeastern District President, Reverend Dr. Bill Harmon, our pastors, Jonathan and Zach, and all who share your word. Arm them with the power of your Holy Spirit to contradict the lies of the enemy and build up your church upon the eternal foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing on our Resurrection Lutheran School teachers and students as they begin another year in education and service, making new friends in the classroom and finding the loving friend that they have in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, grant healing to the sick, especially to Eric, Mara, Sue, Karen, Corey, Parker, Connie, Natalie, for those who are in mourning, the family of Kay Brunmeyer. Strengthen the weak, endurance to bear up under trial, patience to await his deliverance, and peace at the last. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for a family friend, Sherry. For those, we give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Son promises division, even as he promises salvation. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism and the communion of saints above all other relations in this world, even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all of us we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
as we face our course corrections this week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We conclude with our closing song. has ended. The service now begins. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Bye.